Well, listen, we're going to continue on in our series, Understanding Spirits, the Seven Spirits of God. And today, the title of my message is, is, is uh, Friend or Foe. You know, that's important because we really need to know who our friends are, you know, and, uh, and who our foes are. And, uh, and I'm not talking about people. So today we're going we're gonna to talk about how the, there's literally, um, we're going to focus on three different areas of spirits. So we know the most important spirit is the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's the one that we're seven spirits of God. That's what we're going to be talking about. But we also have to have an awareness of the other spirits. And, and, and some of those spirits we've been talking about, but we're going to dive into a few more today, uh, time permitting. But also the human spirit. Uh, you know, we don't recognize it, but there, the human spirit is talked about in the Bible and some of the things that we get caught up in is people by allowing and having open doors for other spirits to come in and to influence us and to manipulate us into whatever. So we have to be under, we have to have an awareness and an understanding. I really believe that. And so today we're going to talk about that understanding the spirits. But, uh, you know, there's the evil spirits, there's the spirit of man, and then there's the most important spirit that we'd ever want to fall in love with and hold to and, you know, invite in. And that's Holy Spirit. We just invite you to come in and invade each and every one of us today. Come in and guide our lives and teach us all that we need to know and speak through me, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Well, as we get ready to get started today, I want to just start off with uh, going to an Old Testament scripture, and it's really, uh, I'm just going to talk about it, but it's in Daniel 9. You know, Daniel was praying, and as he was praying for Israel and, and whatever else he was praying for, the Bible really doesn't give us specifics as to what he was praying for, but we knew that he was a, a, a man after God. We knew that he was a righteous man, and he knew, we knew that his, his prayers were not only heard, that God actually dispatched Gabriel with the answer. Now, how many people know that Gabriel was an archangel, one of four archangels that we know of? So, so as we looked at this, he was the messenger angel, if you would. And, and so he was dispatched, but on the way that, um, that he was uh, on the way to go to Daniel, he was delayed for 21 days by who? The prince of Persia. Now, how many people know that's not a human prince? That was a demonic uh, deity. He was a, he was a demonic uh, spirit that really is, uh, you, know, over, um, you know, over that territory. How many people, what territory do you think he was over? What? He was over Persia. Yeah. So, um, and some of us might say Iran and, uh, and, and, but you know, it, the thing is, is that we have to understand that spirits are territorial in nature and, um, they are, this, this was a dominion level spirit. Now it's kind of like, I want to just kind of, uh, in, just make sure that we're on the same page that spirits are not only territorial, but they're like levels of spirits. Just like an army, if you will. So there's, there might be a, a, a world spirit, or in this case, a, a, a dominion spirit that was over a territory that he probably had lots of other spirits that he was in charge of to be able to influence and have an effect in that area, in that territory. And uh, we, as we look to this a little more, he said, well, these spirits had control over that, but that was from the Bible. That was old stuff. No, that's current stuff. We, we have to be aware. We cannot be naive to think that it was just in the Bible and it was just for those days. And, and so as we look to this, we've seen that, that even though that Gabriel was being held up, that God wanted to get his um, message to him. And so what, who is he sin? Michael. The archangel. And he probably took, I don't know how many legions of angels with him. He took the reinforcements with him. And he went down. And sure enough, um, Gabriel was released. And uh, Daniel was told that, you know, I was held up. We heard you immediately. And, and the father dispatched us. But I was held up. Um, and so... 
we see that this is uh, spiritual warfare at its best. We see this in the Bible. We can look through, and we're going to look through different circumstances. But, you know, we don't even know what he was praying for, but we know that he was a mighty man of God, and he was praying for the nation of Israel. Does anybody know which archangel is, is over the nation of Israel? Michael. Ding, 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 ding. You're absolutely right. And, and Michael is a powerful angel, and he's, uh, you know... For me, it's just, it's one of those things that uh, we have to recognize that even when Jesus, I, I was thinking about when Jesus was, um, you know, when they came to, um, to take him, that Peter drew his sword and cut off the ear. You remember that? But he said, no, don't do that. And he put it back on and he healed him. He says, if I wanted to, I could have I commanded, I could have asked the Lord, and he would have sent 12 legions. You know how much a legion is in the Roman uh, in the Roman army, I think it's like 5,000 soldiers. You know, what's that? 4,000 soldiers? Okay, so it's 4,000, it's a whole lot of soldiers. So, you know, it's just going to show you that we have to understand this. And so I, I, I'm thinking about how when, when um, Jesus was, you know, crossing over and he landed into the um, place of uh, uh, Gerasenes, there was a, there was a, dem- a demoniac sp- man that was, I mean, he was full of unclean spirits. And he was the one hanging out in the tombs and, and he was cutting himself and, and no one can control him. The town couldn't control him. So he just stayed there and he was strong as all get out. And, um, but, um, as Jesus came immediately, uh, uh, that, that, that spirit, acknowledged who Jesus was. That spirit knew who Jesus was. And, and he says, don't come to torment. Have you come to torment me? You know, it's like he knows and he's fearful of Jesus and the authority and the power that Jesus carries. Amen? But, you know, it's one of those things that we have to understand that um, when Jesus asked him his name, he said, who are you? We are legion, for there are many. Yeah, and then, then what happens is, is that, that he, he's, he's going to cast them out, but they're pleading with him not to cast them out of the country. Why? Because they were territorial. You, are you guys getting this? And then he, they said, you know, don't cast us out. So he released them to go into a, a, a bunch of swine. And they say there was about 2,000 swine. So that means there was probably about 2,000 spirits in that guy. That guy was like, whoo, you know? He had a lot of critters, I call them, right? And uh, so, so we see that they went in, and then immediately those, those swine ran down the hill and then went into the sea and drowned themselves. Now, there's a lot of backstory here. I don't have time to go into that. But, you know, first off, the, the Jews... Swine was unclean to them, but they're tending to the swine. They own the swine. Now, they got upset because now they lost their livelihood, but they shouldn't have been in that business anyway. How many people know there's a lot of people that are probably in businesses they should not be in, especially if they say they're believers? Doing things that they shouldn't be doing and being partakers of things they shouldn't be partakers of. You know, but you start thinking about, you might ask, well, man, with all this kind of spiritual warfare, how are we going to, how are we going to make it? What are we going to do? And I just say, look to your word. He gives us all the answers we need right here. There's power in the word. Ephesians 6 tells us, put on the full armor of God so that you might stand. So when the war comes, when evil comes, when, when you're going through spiritual battles, make sure you got the full armor of God on. Come on. We have to know as Christians, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, Romans eight thirty seven. Well, you might say to yourself, uh, you know, why is it so important to understand the spirits? Well, because the spirits are here in America. And we've talked about a lot of them in the past, the spirit of Baal and all. But you know what? We have to see there's spirits that are trying to invade your house. 
that are trying to invade your friends, your family, your, uh, your workplace. There are spirits that are trying to get into an open door that you might leave open. And so we're going to just touch base briefly on some open doors. But I, I really believe it's, it's something that we need to know that spirits adapt themselves to blend in the culture. They're not going to just come straight on and say, hey, I'm a spirit. I'm coming after you. You're going to shut the door on them, right? Or take authority in Jesus' name. No, they're going to try to subtly come in the back door. They're going to try to come in that, 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 that crack in the door because you went to sleep with anger. Don't let the sun go down with anger. Why? Lest you leave a foothold for the enemy. Let that enemy put the foothold in that door. And then if you leave it long enough and you hold on to your anger, spirit of anger long enough, it becomes a stronghold in your life. And then all of a sudden bitterness and all the other things. He goes back and gets a bunch of critters to bring into your life. No, seriously. You know, we talked about this and, and we talked about how that, you know, in the scripture it talks about that when they cleaned out a house and made everything orderly and put everything right, that that spirit was kicked out and given the boot. He wanders out aimlessly and he says man I'm just going to go back to my old house and see if I can just get in and then they see that there was not it was not filled it was still empty but it was clean and orderly so he goes and gets seven of his friends come on let's come on hang out with me and they're more powerful than him so we know the scripture we know uh, all this but it's like wait a minute well well how does that how, what does that look like in today's well I'm going to tell you a story about 25 years ago when we were, uh, we were, my wife and I, we were traveling in different states and ministering at churches in different places. And, and um, I remember going to Farmington, New Mexico. Now, you, when we would go to travel, we would go ready. We would go at least as ready as we could be. We would fast before we would go. We would go prayed up. And, and, and so we're driving and all of a sudden, this is, uh, I think, the second at least the second time that we were, we were going there to minister. And um, so we're going in our van, and we're driving around this, this mountain, and all of a sudden I see these, I don't know, five or six blackbirds on these posts. And here's what they did. Whoop. I mean, that's a little freaky. I, I'm just saying. It was like they knew we were coming. And it's like they looked at us, and they watched us. with. You can see their head turn. And all of a sudden, we got around that corner, and our van started shaking violently. Shut up, da 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 And we started praying immediately. And as soon as we did, guess what? The authority of God came into the van, and everything stopped. Because when we looked outside, there was no wind. There was no bushes moving. It was like they knew we were coming. Why? Because spirits watch you. Don't think. Don't be naive. The spirits are watching you and paying attention to your habits, to the things that you do. They, they know when to come in. Come on, how many people ever feel like you're under attack late at night when you're tired? Come on, that's, that's right. How about temptation? How many people know that you're, you're, you, you see temptation comes in at those most vulnerable times? You know, but that's because they're watching. They're trying to get in. And so... Anyway, as we go there, we, we knew that there was going to be some, some stuff that was going to go on. I might have shared this story with you, but the first thing we did, we met with the team. And, and when we met with the team, we started to worship. And all of a sudden, as we prayed, this lady who was a leader hit the ground and started slivering on the, on the floor like a snake. We had to do a deliverance right there. We had to cast that critter off of her right there. But do you know, it's because of the culture they were, um, the, the, the native culture was that even though they were Christians, they would still go through the rituals of going up to the high places and going to the sweat tents where, it, where there was even witch doctors and they would go through these ceremonial things and they didn't even recognize that they were opening the door to allow the critters to come up and influence them. Are you guys getting this? So we, what we do matters. And we have to understand that if you're allowing um, doors to open, then, then there's a challenge with that. So, so we had to, you know, and this was a very nice lady. Talk to her afterwards. But she allowed something in because of the door that she opened that unknowingly that 
she was just doing what they were used to doing. Demonic and satanic things happen every day all around the world. And we have to be aware of them. And I really believe that this is why um, God is having us teach, you know, on this subject. Because we need to be aware of the battle that we're in, whether we recognize it or not. Whether you realize it or not. We got Mary and Marty going, getting ready to, to go out of the country to a, to a place that I was just praying earlier. I says, man, let that uh, Artemis, uh, Artemis uh, spirit be held t- captive while, she's, while they're there. <laughs> you know? and, and, you know, you think about it, well, or some known as Diana. You know, but hey, those spirits are real and they're influencing a nation and a people and they're good people over there. Can I tell you, don't, don't be fooled. Oh, well, you know, if a spirit gets on somebody, it's because they deserve it. No, that's not true. You, you can have very good people. You know, matter of fact, um, uh, allowing the, that those unclean spirits in uh, and influence people, and very good people, I might add, sometimes people don't even recognize. You guys ever hear of yoga? Well, there's Christian yoga, right? Well, people are all about the Christian yoga, but what they don't understand is, is that that's, a, that's really worshiping Hindu gods. And people don't understand that. They don't recognize it because all they're trying to do is go there and do their positions and, and empty themselves. And, and really, you know, I mean, it's just something. And, but those, what they don't understand is 2,000 or so years ago, those prayer postures or those, um, the, the way they would posture their bodies was actually something that the Hindu gods had created and established back in those days, way back in the day. They don't understand that they're worshiping. They're getting caught up into idolatry without even knowing it. Are you, are you guys with me on this? And I know that, uh, you know, and then they, you know, they want to they wanna connect with this cosmic uh, consciousness, if you will. They want to get to a place where, uh, you know, they're just trying to do something good for their body and good for their spirit, they think but they don't understand the spirits that are behind it. Okay? So I just, I'm just telling you that. And I'm not trying to do yoga. Just repent and just release it in, in Jesus' name. And I'm not trying to come after anybody. I just, I'm just here to bring an awareness that we have to be aware of the different ways that the enemy tries to get into our lives. You know? And uh, you know that all through the New Testament and the Old Testament like it, it talks about staying away from idolatry. It's really, really important. But, you know, these good people, they're oblivious to it. They don't understand what this really, really is doing. The open door that they said, come on in. You know, and um, then they might wonder why they might be, uh, you know, having um, influences in in circumstances in their lives. You know, we see the Eastern culture of meditation. Well, it's different than God's culture of meditation, uh, Eastern culture of meditation is to empty yourself, to get into this higher conscious by emptying yourself and, and doing whatever they do. I don't know all the details, never done it. But God doesn't want us to do that. He says, fill yourself. God wants us to fill. He don't want us to be that empty house that, that all of a sudden we got seven more trying to come in. You see what I'm saying? So we look at this. Matter of fact, John, uh, Joshua 1.8 says this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, say then, you will make your way prosperous. How many people want to prosper? Meditate on the word of God. Come on, keep it in. Okay, and then it goes on. And then you will have good success. How many people want to be successful? See, it's all here. The word of God, the blessings of God, the anointing of God is going to come upon those who are seeking him. Amen? You know, we need the word because the word is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts through bone and marrow and spirit, soul and spirit even to dividing and knowing the intentions of the heart. 
Can I tell you something, friends? So often we get caught up in stuff that we don't even know we're getting caught up in. But hey, when you get into the word, all of a sudden you start to recognize what the word of God is saying and what the spirit of the Lord is revealing to you through his word. That's why I always tell everyone, when you read the word before you start, if you can, praise his holy name. Get your praise on. Why? Because he inhabits the praises of his people. So in case you did something the night before and you got a little distant, he don't, he don't leave you, but sometimes we leave him. You know what I'm saying? And so sometimes you get a little distant. So, so when you get up in the morning or whenever you read your word, and I hope it's every day, my brothers and sisters... And, and then you get into what? Praise him first. And then all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And then you read the word and you ask him. This is what I do. I ask him to give me revelation. Give me that downloads of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Because I want to know what you're saying and why you're saying it. I don't want to just read it as a history book. I don't want to just read it because it's something to do. I want to glean from it. Amen. So, so I, I just want to encourage you to do that. And then, I, I got to tell you, when you pray, it's pray is conversation with the Lord. Right? Prayer is relationship. How many people know that, that God wants to be in relationship with us? Matter of fact, he wants such a close relationship that it's intimacy. So in other words, into me, you see. No. <laughs> but... But, you know, we have to be so transparent and so in relationship to the Lord that as we're studying his word, as we're praying and talking to him like a friend, it's through that relationship that intimacy comes. You know, you you think about it that he says that I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. But can I tell you something? It wasn't always that way. They weren't always into that place that he could actually call them a friend. See, I call you my friends. There's this if and when, or if and then, if you will. He says, I call you my friends if what? You keep my commands. And I'm going to share that in a minute, so I don't want to go too, too much into it. But can I tell you something, friends? It's important that we're in relationship with the Lord because that's when we're going to start to see a breakthrough in our lives. That's when we're going to start to see strongholds being torn down. God loves us so much. He wants to be in our lives, and he wants to be ministering to us and through us. Amen? So, you know, sometimes when we're in prayer, though, we're dealing, we need to deal with something. We might be dealing with something, but sometimes we need to remove some things. We need to, you know, there might be something that we need to remove to accomplish what God had sent us to do. So I think about Moses and and as he was on uh, Mount Sinai and and all of a sudden he's just tending to his father's, uh, uh, father-in-law's flock, right? And all of a sudden he sees a bush over there burning. But it wasn't being consumed, so it was different. You know, in the desert, it's probably no, nothing strange about, uh, you know, fires igniting because of the heat or whatever, dry stuff. But that bush was not being consumed in the fire. So it, he turned, it, the Bible says, he turned to go over there and to see what was going on. And as he was looking, all of a sudden, the Lord noticed in the bush, the Lord noticed that he, can, he, he, he turned to look. And so... <laughs> That flame, I got to just tell you, that that flame was the fire, the Shekinah glory of God. Matter of fact, some believe it's pre-incarnate Jesus who was speaking to him. And God spoke to Moses and told him uh, and, uh, to go, and he, uh, that he heard the cries of his people, and he wanted to send them to go and set his people free. Why? Because they got caught up into idolatry. They got caught up into the world, and then... Because of that, they pulled away. And so all of a sudden, the world and the enemy and the spirits came upon them. So now they're in captivity in Egypt, which they have a lot of gods over there. And their uh, witchcraft was one of the primary uh, things in in that day. And the uh, the Egyptians used witchcraft, matter of fact, to even copy what was going on. When he went there and, and they went to Pharaoh and let God see, and then all of a sudden he let down his staff and, and, and his staff turned into a snake and Aaron did and, and all of a sudden they did the same thing. Right? The only difference is their staff could mimic and they 
the other snakes. But the point being is, for the first three, they were able to mimic and they were able to do. How many people know that God's the authentic, but the enemy's the counterfeit? So he, they did their whatever, their trickeries and their whatever, um, but, but they, couldn't, they couldn't do the next seven. And all ten, how many people, all ten of those plagues were all connected to their gods, to their deities, to their little G's. Every one of them. And I don't have time to go into that, but, but it was one of those things. Why? Because I really believe that Moses wanted to be able to let God's people go to the mountain of Sinai right where he was. That's where, after they got set free and went in to the wilderness, he took them right to where he saw the burning bush. Maybe not the exact spot, but to that mountain. And he wanted them to experience what he experienced that changed his life. Are you guys getting this? We, we need to be people that love people so much that not only love God, but love others so much that we want them to experience what we're experiencing. What God did for us, we want them to receive it as well. I want you guys to be able to receive whatever the Lord has blessed me with. I want you guys to have it too. You see, we have got to be a people that, that understand the first and the second most important commandments, and that's to love the Lord your God with all your might and strength and everything that's within you. You love God first, but then you love others as you love yourself. You know, it's kind of like when you have your people saying, man, yeah, you see what those guys are doing? Man, I hate those guys. I love God, but I hate those guys. Well, no, then you, you missed it because God loves those guys. Yeah, he might not like what they're doing, but he still loves them. See, his love is perfect. That's why I loved what Lily prayed. Lily prayed for those who attacked Israel. Why? Because God loves them too. They're just deceived. Do you see what I'm saying? So we've got to pray for those who are doing wrong. We've got to pray for those who, who have been caught up into something that they ought not be. But we've got to pray for their salvation. So knowing the spirits is, is so important. And I just want to tell you, though, is knowing the Holy Spirit is probably the most important thing that we can learn here. Yes, knowing about all these other critters, that's good to know because we have to be aware of the battle that we're in. But Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God is a great example of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit that's available to us as we position ourselves to receive it. We do this through what? Relationship and intimacy with God. Through a, a place of holiness. And to be set apart ones for Jesus. As we allow ourselves to be set apart ones. As we allow ourselves to pursue him. Uh, because he, he longs. He longs to spend time with us. He longs to have a relationship with us. So turn your Bibles to Isaiah 11. We're going to get started. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of, its, uh, out of his roots. Verse 2. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Rest upon who? You think that is? Rest upon Jesus. That's what it's talking about. Rest upon Jesus. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Now, you know, we, are, we all talked about this. The Spirit of wisdom is connected to understanding because without understanding, then you won't know how to apply the wisdom. The Spirit of counsel and might. See, God can give you a word. We've talked about this in some of the last sessions. But God can give you a word and counsel you. But without obedience, you'll never get the might to accomplish what that word was for. See, God's always ready to, to whatever he gives us. As, as we receive a word from God, he, there, there's a positive thing. As we receive a word and we're faithful and we're obedient to release that word, there's a power and authority that's connected to it to accomplish what it was sent to do. i got three amens. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm telling you, friends, this is uh, something that's so vitally important because how many people here want to not only be counseled by the Holy Spirit or God, but he want, you want to have the might that goes with it to accomplish what, in, what you need in your life, to have the breakthroughs that you need to have in your life. Then there's a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and we're getting where we want to be today. Right, Marty? <laughs> so the spirit of, uh, of knowledge... And the fear of the Lord. But look at, look at 3a. He says his delight. Whose delight? Jesus' delight is in the fear of the Lord. 
woe. So isn't, you know, Jesus should be our, the one that we try to assimilate to, right? We want to be more like Jesus, right, Jesus? We might want to be more like him. So, so the more time we spend with him, the more he's going to rub off on us. The more we're reading his word, the more we understand who he is. Because too many people, I really believe, we are more concerned about what he does than who he is. Jesus, we want to know Jesus. We want to spend time with Jesus. We want to be in, but we're studying who he is. Because Jesus is the word. But we want to be in relationship. We want to have that intimacy. If, if, if you truly love Jesus, don't just look to what he can do for you. But find out and get to know him so you know who he is. And then once we understand who he is, then we're going to know his very nature, his very character. And, and we're going to start to realize and grow in the things that he has for you and me. Then when we, when we step out in faith, believing that whatever he's called us to do, that we have the faith to believe that we can accomplish that. Amen? Okay. So our delight ought to be in Jesus as well. So if you can, let's, let's get, we're going to have to really pick it up now. Um, but Proverbs 2, and let's read 1 through 5, because this Proverbs is an if and then. How many people know there's a lot of if and thens in the Bible? If you do this, then this will take place. So there's, there's like a covenant. A covenant is between at least two parties, right? But it's, it's all contingent on doing whatever you agreed upon. Right, Well. So as we look to this, we have to recognize that, uh, well, let's just get into it and, and you're, you're going to see what I'm talking about. In verse 1, it says, are you there? My son, if you receive my words, see the if? If you receive my words and treasure my uh, commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom. Are you listening to this? Incline your ear to wisdom. Okay. And apply your heart to understanding. There's two of them, right? Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. Ooh, come on now. If, verse 4, if you seek her as silver. Who's, who's, who's her? Wisdom, yes. And search for her as a hidden, as, this is the good treasures. And then it says in verse 5, then, this is the good stuff, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Ooh. You see, there's something that is, that if we do what we're called to do, if we do our part, he always does his. Amen. But we have to be aware. We have to recognize what he's asking of us, what he's, what he's told us and talked to us about and, and try to get through our, our, at least my thick head sometimes. You know, if you ever done something and you just, man, I, I did that again? You know, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. You know, whatever. You know, but sometimes we just do stuff until we finally get it right. Amen. So, but who else had the if and thens? Jesus. Look, turn to John 15. Okay, so John 15, verse 11 says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. You see how his heart is? He wants our joy to be full. <clears throat> what he has, he wants to give to us. Okay, 12. This is, my, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. 13, greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Come on. Can I tell you something? Uh, you know, that if we look to that, how many times have you laid down your life for your friends? Now, I don't mean you didn't die, but you died of flesh. You died of yourself. Verse 14, you are my friends. Now, once you get this, if you do what I command you. So that's what Jesus, that's his stipulation. You're my friends if you do what I just told you, what I just commanded you. You know, there's too many people, I really believe, that they miss that because too often they get offended. A spirit of offense comes upon them. See, that's a critter. 
That's a critter. That's an enemy that's just watching you, and he's looking, okay, how can I get to that person? Oh, well, they didn't say hello to me. Oh, don't laugh. It, uh, it happens. But, you know, or they didn't recognize what I have to give, and they didn't ask me to, well, you know what? Come up and, and get involved. We're, we're open because we love you all. But I'm not saying you guys, but I'm just trying to say it happens all the time. But we have to understand offense is a spirit that's trying to always get on people so that they can leave the church and go to another church to, to allow that spirit of offense to get on them about them people. The fear, 19.9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. Woo! I'm going to say that again. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. Well, can I tell you something? Adam and Eve was in the garden, and they walked with God, but they didn't endure. Satan and a third of the angels were on the, around the throne of God, worshiping and ministering to God but they didn't endure forever. And we can go down the list and there's a lot of them all the way down. We can look at all, but how many people know it's better, it's more important the way you finish than the way you started. We've got to, I, it grieves my heart when I see, you know, brothers and sisters that have done such a great work for the Lord and did so many great things for God, but then all of a sudden, what happens? Something gets in. And they don't finish well. I pray that we all finish well. That God will have mercy and grace upon us. That we can all finish well. But we have to understand that the Lord is wanting us to get a hold of this. Because the knowledge, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord is so important. And I, I've got all these scriptures that I want to read to you. But it's Psalms, uh, we're going to have to do it real quick. Psalms 111.10. The fear of the Lord. This is how important it is. God, it's through his word. And there's so many places in his word that it talks about that the fear of the Lord. Psalms 111.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding has all those um, who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Are you getting this? So you can see how. Let me just say this to you. There's bookends here. So the fear of the Lord is like the bookend. So if you're seeing a book, you know there's a binder, right? There's a whatever. That is the, what, what is that? That's the spirit of the Lord, the spine. It's the spirit of the Lord that everything else branches from, right? Okay, but then you can see that the fear of the Lord is the last one. That is like holding it all together. Are you guys getting this? So if you look to that right there, thank you for that. There, there's, there's, there's some things we have to grab a hold of from this, friends. This is why it's so important because there's so many people that get, lose their way because they don't have the fear of the Lord. They might love Jesus, but don't have the fear of the Lord. Well, what, what do you mean? Why do I have to be scared? You don't have to be scared. We talked about this in, in, in uh, last week, I believe it was, in, <clears throat> but... You don't have to be scared. You just have to have reverence and awe and worship and praise and love. And you, Are you seeing that? So that's what the fear of the Lord is talking about. It's not talking about being scared of the Lord because you know what? That, that's not who God is. He don't want to be, be in relationship through fear, that kind of fear. He wants, to, he wants to be in relationship because you're so in love with God. You're so in awe of his majesty and his majesticness and all the wonderful things that he is and does and all those things that you just want to honor him and praise him. You, just, you, don't, you don't want to be one of those people that just idly go by and don't look at what you're doing in life and how you're doing it. Because why? Because you have such reverence for God. You want to make sure you're not crossing that line. Come on now, friends. And then when you do, you're quick to repent. You're quick to repent because you know that God loves you and you love God. But man, you got to have more reverence. you got to have more fear. And you need him to give you the power and the might to get over what you're facing and what you're going through. 
Hallelujah. Psalms 25, 14 in the New Living Translation says, The Lord is a friend to those who fear him and teaches them his covenant. Can I tell you something? It's, it's got to be, every, uh, Jesus is our divine pattern of how we live, but it's not about being scared of God. He doesn't, a matter of fact, he gives us free will because why? Because he loves us. He wants us to come to him freely. He doesn't want to control us. He doesn't want to manipulate us. Matter of fact, in the garden, he could have just not let them eat from the tree. But he didn't want robots. He wants people that truly love him and pursue him. Amen? Um, Proverbs 19, 23. The fear of the Lord leads to life. How many people want to have more life? Come on now. Life and life more abundantly. Okay. And he who has it will abide in satisfaction. How many people want to be satisfied with your life? With the things that you're doing, the things that's being done. Okay, come on now. And he will not be visited with evil. It's like there's a hedge of protection around you because you have the fear of the Lord that, that all of a sudden the enemy will come. Oh, no, I'm out of here. Rose is in the house. I'm out of here. Are you guys getting this? We have got to understand those things. That w- there's such wisdom and revelation in his word. We have to um, grab a hold of it. Proverbs 10, 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs days. How many people want to live a little longer? If he tarries, don't you want to live a little longer? If he tarries, that's right. Um, But the years of the wicked will be shortened. Are you guys getting this? Okay. Proverbs 14, 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn away from the snares of death. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn away from the snares of death. What is trying to kill, steal, and destroy? The enemy's always trying to come to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. We have to choose. We got free will. We can choose where we live and what we do. Can I have the worship team come on up, please?